It's been over two weeks since the white supremacist terrorist attack that happened in Charlottesville, Virginia. The Unite the Right rally brought together fascists of all stripes, from traditional KKK members to the current wave of ironic internet Nazis, which ended in abrupt violence. Who knew that violent ideologies begets violence? A man identified by the police as James Fields deliberately drove his car into a crowd of dozens of counter-protesters in an attempt to run them over, killing Heather Heyer and injuring a dozen others. In the wake of Charlottesville and the dozens more of white supremacist terrorist attacks that are bound to rise from it, there has been a certain hot take that is dominating the political discourse around the rise of far-right extremism, especially online. Both sides are to blame, actually. That anti-fascists are exactly the same as fascists who look to enact genocide and create a white ethnostate. The sentiment arises from a commonly used theory in mainstream politics known as horseshoe theory. Horseshoe theory stipulates that the far left and the far right are more similar to each other in essentials than either is to the political center. That the alt-left, which is a made-up term created by centrists on Twitter over two years ago to equate Bernie supporters and leftists to Trump supporters because they refused to support Hillary Clinton, is the equivalent of the alt-right. Under horseshoe theory, there is always a political equal to certain positions. Everything must be binarized, and that there is always a compromise between these two positions. There is no balance between things like fascism and anti-fascism. Either you are a fascist, or you aren't. If you attempt to find the center between these two positions, you are automatically working to help the fascists. This is the case for a lot of political issues. Either people have access to reproductive health care, or they don't. Either we do something about climate change, or we don't. Either we fight for the liberation of the working class, or we don't. I don't care for Richard Dawkins, but I do agree with the fact that when two opposite points of view are expressed with equal intensity, the truth does not necessarily lie exactly halfway between them. It is possible for one side to be simply wrong. Unfortunately, when centrists created a political equivalence to the alt-right, they didn't think about how this framework would be used to legitimize the position that white people deserve their own ethnostate by comparing it to the idea that all people should have access to health care and that the police state should be dismantled. President Trump took advantage of the framework created by centrists in order to justify and excuse the actions of the alt-right by pointing to the alt-left. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? and actual fascists such as Baked Alaska and Richard Spencer followed suit. This is one of the many problems of horseshoe theory, which is practically interchangeable with the balance fallacy and appeal to moderation at this point. The use of horseshoe theory is common among radical centrists and diehard moderates who tend to oversimplify various political ideologies and most of all seek to discredit anyone who wants to change the status quo for better or for worse. Now, Tommy Lahren isn't a centrist by any stretch of the word, but comparing Black Lives Matter to the actual Ku Klux Klan was the predecessor to comparing literal fascists who want to commit genocide to people who want to stop them, otherwise known as anti-fascists. This is a gross false equivalence that is especially heinous, as it equates black people fighting against police brutality and institutional racism to white terrorists who terrorize black people in order to maintain white dominance, and compares people who want to commit genocide to those who want to stop them. The main thing that leads to comparisons like this is the use of violence. Centrists tend to have a very simplistic view on the use of violence, as they overemphasize civility and kindness within public discourse, no matter the topic at hand, whether it be, we should raise taxes by 10%, or we should gas the Jews. I would say that they view all forms of violence as bad and equally reprehensible, but that simply is not the case, as they defend the violence enacted by police, the military, politicians, capitalists, and other state actors. In their eyes, only the state is allowed to use violence, and everyone who's a non-state actor is demonized as a terrorist. The end goal of their tactics doesn't matter, only the means which causes them to overlook the obvious differences between someone who wants to murder anyone who is not like them, and the people who want to stop them from doing that. It also leads them to overlook several white supremacist rallies that were cancelled across the country out of fear of leftist violence, something that rational debate on Twitter could never achieve. As time goes on, I expect to see the both sides narrative practically non-stop in the media and within online discourse, along with people encouraging leftists to stop protesting and being the actual resistance. As usual, thanks for watching. Please leave your thoughts in the comments section below, since I enjoy hearing what you guys have to say. If you aren't already, become a subscriber, and become a patron if you can. Also, thank you to my patrons listed on the screen. You guys make this possible.